Now, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has explained why it tweeted uh, Nigeria desperately looking for extraction kits. Dr. Chike Iekwazo, Director General of NCDC, said on Monday that he made the request to prevent shorting down of a network of 15 laboratories uh, currently testing for COVID-19 in Nigeria. Iekwazo made the explanation at a daily briefing of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 in Abuja. And uh, he stated that there was a desperate need for more RNA extraction kits to expand COVID-19 testing. Following the tweet, Nigerians criticized the NCDC boss on social media, claiming he publicly requested for COVID-19 test kits after saying that the country had enough resources to fight the virus. By way of clarification, the Director General of uh, NCDC stated that calling for extraction kits was not the same as asking for test kits. He confirmed that there was a supply chain of all the commodities, but there are supply chain challenges in things coming into the country now. Iekwazu commended the citizens of Nigeria, who he said will continue to surprise us by its spirit, uh, by its people, and by its ingenuity. And joining us via Skype to discuss this is Dr. Dozier Oswoji. Good morning, Dr. Oswoji. Good morning. And thanks, Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. Um, and let's go straight to the matter. Apparently, South Africa tests uh, 161,000, as you do know. Ghana, uh, 101.6 there. Egypt, 90,000. But Nigeria, we're just over 10,000. And recently, the Director General of the NCDC, Chike Iekwazu, on Sunday said, we needed to stock more of the RNA extraction kits to cater for the expansion of its COVID-19 testing capacity. Now, where do we hope to obtain these much needed kits? Really, I, I have no idea where the NCDC wants to procure this item. I think this reveals the state of awareness of the NCDC. This pandemic did not take us by surprise. So we should have had these things figured out. When you say it a long didn't time take us, sorry, Doctor. Calling sorry. on the public and about that. Go ahead. Yeah. How do you mean? Uh, how do you mean? What do you mean, rather, when you say the pandemic did not take us by surprise? Nobody anticipated it, anyways. It did not take us by surprise because it started in Wuhan, China, it spread to the U.S., so we knew this was going to come upon us. And one of the things we should have done would have been to take proactive steps, knowing the population that we have, to get everything that we need. Like a movie will say, winter is coming. When you know winter is coming, you have to prepare for it. Mm. Nigeria has very frequent flyers overseas, so we knew this was going to come. So this is not the time to go out to the public and say, you need this. We should have had these things stockpiled. Secondly is, at this point, I expect the NCDC to have all the machinery put on ground to know how to source for these materials. And I'm sure if we were dealing with our politicians and if this was an election, politicians would know how to get these things by all means necessary. I don't know why in the face of a disease that is threatening human uh, existence, we cannot do all that is necessary to get these things. This is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. This is not rocket science. Now, Dr. Dozier, I'm sure you are paying attention to what is happening in other parts of Africa. Uh, Senegal is being in the news for all the good reasons. And the question is how, you know, have our neighboring countries such as uh, Senegal, you know, Ghana, uh, managed to do more testing than us, despite uh, having more ground to cover in terms of a larger population? You know, Senegal is about 60 million, and we are over 200 million as a nation. What's going on? Exactly the same question that I've, I've been asking, and it seems that we're not getting answers to that. Senegal's case is a bit peculiar because they're using the testing kits for dengue fever to test for um, coronavirus. I don't know how reliable that is, but um, one that I'm sure about is that of Ghana. Ghana is still doing the same testing which is the PCR, the polymer, uh, polymerase chain reaction testing that Nigeria is doing, yet they are testing a whole lot of numbers compared to us. I looked at the statistics, and Nigeria is like the third from below in terms of testing capacity. 
We are just leading um, places like Malawi, Burundi, and Yemen. Mm. Now, it's, it's surprising. And one of the things, I think, is the, is the testing method. Ghana is employing a testing method called pooled testing, whereby if it takes you four hours to take, um, test 10 people, they could be testing 100 people at that same time. It's a technique. And um, the SCDC hasn't really come out straight to tell us why they feel the uh, method Nigeria is taking is more superior to what Ghana has. Now, I'm not saying maybe we have our own um, different strategy, and I celebrate that. But if you have, let's say, two labs in Lagos, what stops you from running your routine technique in one lab and then trying out this um, pool testing in another lab and then comparing what you have in both? Mm -hmm. We haven't done that. And I think if we are supposed to face down this lockdown or ease down this lockdown, the NCDC needs to be carrying out extensive testing. And what we are doing so far is abysmal. Wow. All right. Now, what's the consequences of this, you know, uh, not testing enough? Because 10, over 10,000 tests has been done in a country of 200 and something million. What's the consequences? Like I said, our testing capacity is really shameful, mm. to say the least. And I'll tell you about four consequences. One is that you can't fight an enemy you can't see. Take, for example, what is happening in Kano. If not for the testing, we wouldn't know what is happening in Kano, and the steps that have been taken by government so far would not have been done. So you need this testing to unveil or reveal the enemy and, you know, review your testing strategies. Mm -hmm. That's one. Secondly, what happens right now is that if you're a suspected case and you come to my hospital, if you meet the case definition, we will admit to you in what we call a temporary holding area and will request for testing to be done. Mm. Mind you, to get a test done will take you a minimum of 24 hours if you're admitted in a hospital. Then it takes about 48 to 72 hours for that testing result to be ready. That's four days. Now, I have a, a temporary holding facility that has just two beds. What it means is that if I'm holding two people for four days before I can get their results and know what I'm going to do, what it means is that if the third patient comes, there will be no space. I'll just simply tell the patient, we don't have a space for you. Go somewhere else. And mind you, most other hospitals don't even have temporary holding areas, which is another problem and another discussion for another day. Mm -hmm. Now, the third thing is economy of resources. For those four days, for each shift, I'll use about six PPEs, six coveralls, six um, N95 masks, and all that, face shields, goggles, boots. Now, if I do that for four days, that is multiplying it by four. Mm -hmm. But if we had a faster testing, if we had an increased testing capacity, faster sample collection, and faster release of results, that could be narrowed down in two days. In two days, I know what to do, and then I know how to step these patients down and manage them for the regular ailments or escalate them if they are positive to go and be managed at the isolation centers. So talking about knowing the enemy, economy of resources, and then bed space. Now, also understand that... Dr. Dozier, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is where we have to end it in the interest of time. I must say thank you so very well, much for your time. You very and, of course, we'll bring you again on another day. Mm -hmm.